So what do you do to find love, you know? I just got out of a relationship. It was an open relationship that only she knew was open. And yeah, it was sad. It was like three years and she was off doing her thing. I had no idea. She went to Burning Man to find herself and then, you know, she found someone else. And uh, her spirit animal, it was great. And uh, it was sad, so I didn't know what to do, you know? So I, I started to try to, and someone recommended, you know, if you get tired of the dating apps, just use Instagram. That's how millennials date now, Instagram. And I started looking at some of the, I can't stand some of the profiles I see on Instagram. You know the ones I'm talking about with the Be the change you wish to see in the world. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I can't do it. So I started dating women who are a bit more mature, you know, like strong, independent women. Like everyone's a strong, independent woman though. Like even you, sir, strong, independent woman. <laughs> Even you, you know, you can't not be a strong, independent woman. And they're my favorite, but the only issue is that they're always busy. I'm always so busy. I'm just super busy, you know. Sorry, I'm busy. Like, I just busy. You say it so much, I think you think it's attractive. But I have not looked at a woman and be like, hey, yo, Mike, you see that girl? I bet you her calendar is full. Mm. <laughs> she probably got back-to-back -back meetings, yo. Responsible. I'm not doing that shit. I was super busy, super busy. So I started to try to meet women out in like bars and nightclubs, but it sucks when you go out to try to meet someone in a bar and a nightclub, you know? Because the issue is, is you never get your first choice. You already have your mind made up on what you want. And I remember one time I went out, I was like, I went for my first choice, and she's like, sorry, you're just, you're great, but you're not my type. I was like, what's your type? Tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, you know, the opposite of you. <laughs> I mean, I'm not racist, but my vagina is. <laughs> She's picky, you know, I like what I like. You hear that one all the time. I'm just picky. <laughs> you guys probably have friends like that too. Then you have the opposite too, the friends who are just like, I just love myself a little bit of chocolate, you know. <laughs> Once you go black, you need health insurance. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. So I remember going out one night and there was this little bachelorette party, just tearing ass through the fucking club, just going crazy, just <laughs> Just this cloud of entitlement. <laughs> There's always like creepy guys following them too, like <laughs> And they come to find out they were wearing all black. And then I walked up to them, I was like, what, what is this? And they're like, it's a divorce party. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, you know how you have like little pink dicks? They had little black dicks and a necklace, like very tribal. So I was, I was talking to the woman, I was like, when did you and your husband decide to get divorced? And she's like, he doesn't know yet. I was like, oh. It's like, well, why, why are you getting divorced? And she's like, well, Richard is his name, and the love is gone. He would last only 20 seconds, and I can't stand him. I'm done with his ass. And she's looking me up and down. She's like, you know, you're not my first choice. And I was like, I was thinking the same thing, you know? <laughs> but it's late at night, and so, you know, we didn't have very many options left. And, you, you know, you kind of do stupid shit when you're desperate. And she just says, come with me. And we take, she takes me to a handicapped toilet in the nightclub. And I'm thinking like, dude, what if someone comes in here who's disabled? And she, said, she says, I haven't had sex in two years. That's my disability, okay? <laughs> and so I'm, I'm thinking like, all right, this feels like community service. And so we're in the... <laughs> We're in there and you know, I'm thinking like, how am I gonna get her going in a public toilet? And before I could even try anything, she just pulls out and she's just like, go! And I was like, I, try, I step up to the plate and she says, you better last longer than Richard! That lasted 30 seconds, so that's 10 seconds longer. I think that's pretty, that's a pretty good accomplishment. But it was a low place though, it's sad. You do dumb things when you're desperate. And, uh, and so I started to uh, go, I went home alone. You know, it's nothing worse when you go home alone after a night out and you don't pull and you really want to and all your friends do, you're texting your potential and they don't write back, so you delete their fucking phone number, you know? <laughs> and then you open up some free porn. Don't act like I'm the only one, fuck you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You open up the free porn, the only problem is the pop-up ads that keep coming up, you know, when you're trying to, you know, make love to yourself, and then you're trying to do the, you know, click out the pop-up ad, and you're trying to maintain the stroke, you're trying to click out the pop-up ad, maintain the stroke, and then you accidentally click the video you want to watch, you're gonna drive your hand, and then use the mouse, and then you go back and forth. And then, in all my fury, I accidentally clicked on one of those ads that you're not supposed to click on, and it turned out it was an advertisement for a fleshlight. Fleshlight, which is a fake vagina. Yeah, there's nothing more depressing than when you do next day shipping on a fake vagina. And <laughs> it showed up, and it comes with a little piece of paper that explains how to use it. And I was like, finally, a vagina with an instruction manual. You know, like, 
this is great, but in order for it to feel like the real thing, you have to heat it up in the microwave, in water. And I had roommates, so I had to wait for them to leave, and I just scurry out to the microwave. And the recommended setting was turkey defrost. And, uh, and so you put it in, and I'm waiting. And normally when you're hungover, you're waiting for like your macaroni and cheese, but there I am staring at a boiling vagina. <laughs> waiting for it to finish, ding, and I take it out, and I scurry back to my room. And this thing costs a hundred bucks, and I was wondering, like, does it feel like the real thing? And I'm like, Pfft. I'm never going out again. It felt better than the real thing. I'm like, <laughs> So then, now you take it, and you can put it in the little flesh-like container so you can, fuck it, I mean, what else are you gonna do with it? And it comes with a stand so you could stand up and do it, but that costs like 200 bucks. That's how they get you. So instead, you could put it in between the couch cushions. So you could be, you know, intimate and have consensual coitus with, uh, I don't know, we'll call it Betsy. And uh, the only couch is in the living room, so I had to go out there with my robe on and orange Crocs and put it in between the couch cushions, lie down on top of it, Superman like in a horny way, and before this could get any more pathetic, any worse, as I'm lying there, the door unlocks, and my roommate comes back, and he looks at me, and I just pretend to be asleep, like <laughs> He's like, hey yo, you wanna come? And I'm like, <laughs> just give me 30 seconds. It's a low place to be, man. When you break up, you know? Because you keep thinking about your ex, right? That's what I was doing. I was thinking about her all the time. So my friend was like, you ever see the movie Eat, Pray, Love? I was like, yeah. He's like, you need to do some, some praying, man. Why don't you take a trip for yourself? See what happens. So I booked a one-way ticket to Thailand. And the only problem is, if you're Thailand, if you're trying to meet someone and you go out, you don't know who's working or who's a civilian. You have no idea which is which. And so after a night of just False starts, I was thinking like, I'm never gonna pay for sex, you know? And so I just want a normal massage to forget about this whole thing. A normal massage at three o'clock in the morning. A normal massage, good old fashioned Christian massage at three o'clock in the morning. And I go to this place, apparently it was really good. And I'm getting a massage and this woman's massaging me. And she's good too, she's getting in there. And she's like, flip over. So I flip over, she starts massaging all down here. And then you next thing you know, I get excited. And she's looking at me, she's like, you want a little, she didn't speak English, so she's like talking in emojis. Do you want happy poops? And, and I was like, yeah, how much? She said, $50. I was like, $50, that's expensive. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. And she started. And it was terrible. She didn't know what the fuck she was doing. I was like, here, just give it to me. Play with my nipples. And I did it myself. <laughs> but I didn't have to pay, though, because it was so bad. She's like, it's okay. And then so I tell my friends, like, dude, I went to that place. It was fucking terrible. And he's like, you went to the wrong one. You got to go to the other one. So I go to the other one. And I show up. And this one was so busy that there's only two people left. And they told me. They're like, you can have her, which is an 85-year-old woman, or him, which was a him. And normally when I get massages, I, you know, request women. But in this case, I was like, well, you know, maybe he's got the upper body strength to really get in there because I'm going through a lot of shit right now. So I was like, I'll take him. And this little dude, he comes in. He's like, okay, let's go. And we go into the back. And then he starts giving me a massage. And it's fucking good, too. Like, he's getting in there. You know, it was emotional. I start crying, right? <laughs> shit came up from my childhood. I was just like, oh, this is so good. And then he says, flip over. And I was like, oh. And then he says, you want a little happy ending? And I was like, oh, man, I'm straight. But how much? <laughs> and he says, $50. I was like, $50? Are you good? And he says, mm-hmm. Like, how do I know? And he says, I have what you have. I was like, that's a very good point. <laughs> I was like, pay now? He's like, no, you pay after. I was like, okay. So I lie down and he starts. And this motherfucker was good. Like, he really way around too. I'm like, <laughs> so I just closed my eyes so I could still be straight, you know? I, just, I don't know who's massaging me. I don't know. And he's doing his fucking thing. I'm close too. And then I feel like a warm breath down there. And I open my eyes and I see him going, oh, and I'm like, I'm yelling, and there's people like with their hands around their ankles, fucking looking. And they're like, "What's going on?" And then he just says, "I'm sorry," and he runs away. <laughs> and then the older woman comes in. The 85-year-old woman comes in, all calm and shit. She's like, "It's okay, come down, come down. 
I see you're still excited. And I was like, yeah, yeah, he tried to, you know, that's not what I want. He's like, I'm sorry, my son, no manners. I was like, that's your son? It's a family business. <laughs> so, and so I was like, well, yeah, you know, I, it's okay. She's like, uh, well, you know, I, I take care of you for free. I was like, for free? How? Massage? And she said, no, I take care of you. Little hand job, happy ending. You want to be happy, happy ending. I take care of you. We run good business here. Lie down. So this 85-year-old woman tells me to lie down. I was like, all right, go ahead, Grandma. And she gets a handful of lube, and without breaking eye contact, she just takes my dick and goes, 30 seconds, pow! <laughs> Clearing my fucking sinuses, okay? I'm like, oh. I was lightheaded. I was like, oh, wow, holy shit. And then she says, please leave, good rating, and just walks away. Five out of five stars, it was great. Crouching Tiger, hidden hand job.